It's officially Philip Grubauer back in net tonight as the Seattle Kraken once again take on the Vegas Golden Knights. But will that be what we see for the remainder of the season? Has Drieger played well enough to earn his next start? All this and more coming up on this game day. You are locked on Kraken. Your daily podcast on the Seattle Kraken. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We are the Seattle Kraken. What's cracking, Seattle hockey fans? Happy game day. Happy April 1st. And this is the month where not just the Seattle Kraken, but all of the NHL is celebrating this lovely earth that we live on. Let's give it some love. Okay, more on that coming up. But um, I want to talk about the game today. I'm going to give you some clips uh, that we heard at Morning Skate, uh, a few that we heard the other day, and then I'm just basically going to take you back to my conversation with Tony. Rinse and repeat. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. We both said we thought the series might be a split. I thought that the Seattle Kraken were going to win the first game. They didn't. So basically, that means they're going to win tonight. Um, I loved what Tony said about this being a playoff simulation. You're going to hear some of the guys from the team, Eberly, talk about you know, how they feel about potentially playing spoiler. We are also are going to hear from Hayden Flurry makes his way back to the ice. Uh, now, Dave Haxtell did not give an update on what that officially meant. He was in a red jersey, so we'll see what that means. Um, but, uh, okay, first... Let's take you to Hayden and Jordan Eberly, like I mentioned. And um, also, we'll hear from Dave Haxtell talking this morning about tonight's game before we recap what I spoke about with Tony earlier in the week. Uh, yeah, I think uh, you know those 10 games or so I played when Seuss got hurt, I, th I felt really good about my game. And, uh, you know, even the Detroit game and then the Arizona game, I felt good, and that's kind of, you know, that's why it sucked. I mean, I was feeling really good about myself, and, you know, take a hit like that, and then all of a sudden you're sitting for you know, a week, 10 days, two weeks, something like that. So, um, you know, just get back to it. I know it's not going to happen the first game back, but, you know, when I do, just keep it simple and, you know, build from there. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, especially a lot of teams are in our division, so if we can, uh, you know, ruin their playoff uh, chances and all the best. Yeah, no, for sure. You want to, uh, I mean, everyone knows the situation. You look at the standings, um, you know, games are, you know, you're trying to find individual things and, and things to build um, for next season, but then you look at where this team's at, um, Vegas, and how important these points are. Um, you, know, you know, you have to match their desperation, but you also got to find an internal thing as far as, you know, wanting to, you know, disrupt their playoff chances. I think that's an exciting enough, and you have to find a way to revel around that and, and uh, you know, use that, to, uh, use that to an advantage. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the guys here, they've – you get into this uh, part of the season, you start playing full, meaningful games. That's that's where you want to be. You want to be playing meaningful and exciting games at this time of the year. And when you're not in that situation, it's hard. So you have to find a way to um, find outside motivation, like you're talking about playing Vegas, who these points are important. So, and you know, we want to have that type of a, uh, you know, that type of energy, that type of start uh, in our own building every night. Now we have to sustain that, and um, you know, we took a lot of opportunities away from ourselves uh, with you know with poor play with the puck. So we've we've talked about that, and you know, we don't uh, we've talked about it. Uh, we've talked about it directly. Uh, we need to see improvement in that area tonight, um, and you know that'll that'll help us uh, maintain and create a little bit more offensive zone uh, possession time. You know, these these guys are they're hard to play against in terms of getting up ice because um, you know they they're in your face they they pressure coming through the neutral zone um, they have big long D uh, that are able to hold lines um, so you know you've got to make sure you take care of the puck and give yourself to get into the offensive zone and then you know the next area that uh, you know that we have to be much better and we have to be you know a much hungrier team uh, in the offensive zone and that starts with you know winning you know winning those first pucks and finding a way to get them into the middle of the rink and off the yellow. About 
how much they can play in your face and play at top speed. How much are you then thinking about these guys have to be, you know, in essence, taking one step ahead of the play for success? Well, that's a game of hockey. I mean, it's, you know, that's absolutely, it's a game of hockey. But you also have to win your one-on-one -on -one battles. That's, you know, a lot of it comes down to that. Um, you know, there's, there's, you know, there's a ton of one-on-one uh, -on -one battles that, that happen every shift, let alone, you know, if you go out through the game. So, you know, those are the little competitive areas of the game. You know? So it's thought process and, um, you know, it's, a, it's an ability in tight areas to, uh, to come up with, you know, with those 50-50 uh, wins. All right, so again, Hayden Fleury felt that he liked where he was in the lineup, getting some time with Susie out, um, and then he gets injured. That's how the, the game goes. So we'll see what that means for Hayden Fleury. It's been an up-and-down season for him. It's been an up-and-down season for the Seattle Kraken. Um, but we'll see you know, what, what this means for Hayden Fleury. I also mentioned Eberly and Fleury and Eberly talking a little bit about playing spoiler. And they have the opportunity to play spoiler for the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, let's go back, though, to my conversation with Tony to wrap up this top segment on your season. Seattle Kraken game day as we host the Vegas Golden Knights. We're going to wrap this, uh, as I like to call it, squad cast up here. But, Tony, we'll start with you as our guest. We know that the Golden Knights were able to pull out that 4-2 victory, again, having a dominant third period. What are you expecting from VGK tonight as they enter Climate Pledge Arena? Yeah, the, the first time there, I think the fans, if, especially if Seattle gets an early goal, watch out because the Golden Knights are not a good team, especially on the road when they have to battle from behind. I think that goal will have a ton of meaning, uh, meaning for the Golden Knights. I think we're going to see Logan Thompson back in net. And, and as I said, if they don't get Thompson, Tanakin can beat him on Friday a couple of days later in this series. I think it's going to be a low scoring game. I think uh, it's going to be a game of opportunity and you know, the turnovers, I think, will be a major part of this game, special team part. Uh, Jack Eichel, I think his right hand is feeling better. He wasn't taking face-offs. I went to the game against right hand. He was hit with the puck, and then he didn't take face-offs for a while. I think that right now is much better, and he's starting to play a lot better. And Eichel, seven goals, seven assists in 20 games. In uh, currently, that's a streak he's on. The major part of this team, major part of the power play. If, if anyone makes a difference, it will be that now with Eichel centering for the Donoff, who's back on the top line. The Donoff was a guy like them on the second, the third line, the fourth line, the fifth line. I, I he was gone. He was as good as gone. Now he's back on the top line. He's been skating with Eichel, wow, too, and I was just so much faster than everyone else. I look for a low-scoring game, and maybe we'll see Eichel looking for Eddie Vedder in Pearl Jam because he's a huge grunge fan. Maybe he'll be up to the streets of Seattle looking for a place to catch some grunge music after the game. That's my prediction. Oh, wow. I love it. I, I think love it's a split, it. too. I think it'll be a split, Erica. Yeah, I, I'm leaning towards a split. Again, I'm, I'm anticipating that we'll get Groovy in net. I've said it before on the show. Groovy, I think, is still trying to figure out his game or the Seattle Kraken are trying to figure out their game in front, in front of Philip Grubauer. It just has a different cadence when it's Groovy in net. That being said, he is put under fire a lot by the defensive breakdowns that happen. I am inclined to agree with you. I think we'll get one low-scoring low game. Um, but I do think that the Seattle Kraken are really starting to crank it up. So I wouldn't be surprised if in one of these games we see them explode. Now, is it going to be enough? Because like I've said, we've had to play keep up um, with some of these teams and we've seen high scoring games that we lose by one goal and an empty netter tossed in there somewhere. So, you know, uh, I, I think though that the Seattle Kraken are really starting to move in the direction that will establish a foundation for the next season, their season two. Um, so I'm going to go uh, with the Kraken uh, taking this one. I'm going to give it a, a, a three, two score. I think, um, 
And then what I'm hoping for, and we might have to touch base throughout the week, but what I'm hoping (laughs) is that, again, we get that explosion of offense in game two. But but as I said, I I agree with you on the split. So if I say they're going to win tonight, that means that I'm kind of taking the L (laughs) later in the week. But uh, I guess we got to let the guys play the game uh, as we just get to, you know, sit on the couch and and make predictions. (laughs) Should be a lot of. I think it's going to be a hostile environment, and VJ better be on their A game going in there. This is the playoff series for the Seattle Kraken. Make no doubt about it. This is a playoff series for Seattle, and I'm all about it. It's going to be fun. Oh, I love that. I love that. I hope we can keep that energy. And if that if they if they take that energy, I'm very curious to see what type of Seattle Kraken team we get on the ice. But Tony, it was amazing to have this squad cast with you today. A game day for both of our teams as the Vegas Golden Knights will come into the deep at Climate Pledge Arena and take on the Seattle Kraken. As I mentioned, it's uh, the start of the celebration of Earth Month and Earth Day will get later in the month. But one great way to really get connected to the Earth is to have fresh fruits, vegetables, produce. And that's where HelloFresh comes in. You get farm fresh, seasonal produce and easy to make recipes delivered right to your door every week. I mentioned this on the show before. I was going to try HelloFresh. I got my first box the other day. It's amazing. Everything's really straightforward and simple. And what I will also mention is the packaging itself is recyclable or reusable. Uh, So they give you ice packs to keep everything cool just in case you don't get the order right away, which actually did happen to me. Uh, So I was very thankful for that. So I'm reusing my ice packs and the bags that a lot of the produce come in, those are reusable too. So I use that for my recyclables and I can take it down for recycling. And here's the thing. Not only is it great for the earth, it's good for your body. You get to customize your favorite dishes with the Hello Custom offering. You can swap things out. I don't eat a lot of pork, for example. And so there was this one option of kind of like a pork taco situation. And I wanted to switch that out for a different protein. You can do that. Also, when I created my account, I could customize and set the goals that I have or just the way I prefer to eat. Um, Am I more vegetarian leaning? Are there things that I'm working on or things that I just don't have as part of my diet? All of that you can do. So go to HelloFresh.com backslash locked on 16. And you can use that code for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Again, that's HelloFresh.com backslash locked on 16. Use code locked on 16 for 16 free meals and three free gifts. All right. Hope you enjoy. Also want to tell you about another one of our sponsors. You know it. You'll love it. We're t- we talked about food. Now let's talk about snacks. And that, of course, is Built Bar. I've told you that keeping my energy high, it's something I've talked about on the show. It's something, quite honestly, that I'm struggling with. And so one of the ways that I'm trying to mitigate that is by the things that I eat. And so Built Bar is a way to get that consistent nutrition and protein in particular throughout the day without getting hangry or without going to some of, at least for me, what are my go-tos, which is usually sweet and salty snacks. And did you know about the puffs? This is the first of its kind protein-infused marshmallow puff. All of the Built Bars come covered in chocolate, which I absolutely love. And It's 100% real chocolate, but now you have a protein-infused puff option as well, such as the churro, coconut marshmallow, or the particular flavor of this month, or I should say, well, of March, so we got to see what's up for April, was the white chocolate cookies and cream. Um, These are delicious. There's always new flavors. I missed out on some of the specialty flavors because I didn't go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off my order of my favorite specialty orders. Don't be like me. Go to Built.com right now. Again, you can use promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Happy snacking. As always, thank you for making Locked on Crack in your first listen of the day. Now it's time for you to head over to, well, 
Locked On Now. Hear from your experts around the NHL and any other sports that you watch or leagues that you watch, and you'll get expertise from teams around the league, not just your favorite. So you can get updates. You can hear what the opposition is saying about your favorite players. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And, of course, Locked On Now is available wherever you get your podcasts, wherever you get Locked On Kraken, and always available for free for you, the listener. All righty. So we handled Vegas. Um, You know, that is a game that we have to see how it plays out. I really do want the Seattle Kraken to show up. Dave Haxel had been very disappointed. He made that known. We talked about it earlier uh, or yesterday. Um, Just disappointed in in some of the, the lapses. Unfortunately, this teenager team that we have, the Seattle Kraken, that's what they're doing. Uh, But they get another shot at it this weekend. Of course, that's going to be against the Dallas Stars. Now, the last time these two teams played was January 12th. The Stars got a 5-2 victory. Uh, The Seattle Kraken, um, not knowing what the result, the win. (laughs) If they win tonight, when they win tonight, they will be 22-40-6. and This, the Dallas Stars, as of this recording, are 38, 25, and 3. In their last 10 games, the Dallas Stars are on a two-game win streak. We obviously dropped that first game to Vegas. But again, we'll be on a, a one-game win streak by the time we get Dallas. So uh, we're going to be on the road. And um, the Dallas Stars team, first of all, shout out to Braden Holtby who gave a shout out to my good friend, Joe Dabney, the creator of Black Rosie, um, my Black Rosie that I use. Uh, Let me just show it to you here. Boom, my Black Rosie. But also the creator and designer for the Black Rosie jerseys that the Metropolitan Riveters of the Premier Hockey Federation put out on display. I've worn that on the show before. So uh, first of all, shout out to him for giving a shout out to Joe because Joe is amazing. And I hope to continue working with Joe Although, you know, the price is going up now. (laughs) But anyway, um, so shout out to the Dallas Stars for making that happen. Um, uh, Here we go, though. They are 11th overall on the power play. We know Seattle's not great on the power play. Uh, I'm going to show this graphic to you. 78th. 78.4%, excuse me, on the penalty kill, whereas the Seattle Kraken, 73.7%. Face-offs, pretty good, over 50% on their face-offs is Dallas. They're at a 54.5% clip, and um, the Seattle Kraken, 47.6. And then you've got, of course, the goals for, goals against, which I talk about a lot, and the Seattle Kraken are 28th overall in the league. Uh, They're 27th as far as goals allowed or goals against, whereas the Dallas Stars are containing that offense a little bit better on the defensive side, 2.94 goals per game. And then you've got them at uh, 2.89 goals. 2.89 goals uh, is what they score per game. Uh, So that's what we're seeing for Dallas. Um, I think overall... The Seattle Kraken, really at this point, I mean, really it's been the story of all season. You wanted to see them early on establish a little bit of camaraderie. I honestly think that the Seattle Kraken probably still need to do that. Um, that's an area where I'd like the coaching staff and and executives to to maybe take, have a handle on that. I I don't want to say there's, um, it just has to be elevated and you really have to push this team. I think everything from what I'm hearing, the guys are having a good time. They love the city. They love what's going on with the franchise, but now you've really got to push them so that they're pushing each other. And I'd like to see a little bit more of that happening for um, the the Seattle Kraken. Um, You know, all that being said, uh, they're going to need to focus on what they have to do the, the rest of the way out. There's really no point, in my opinion, of focusing on the opposition. Obviously, you're going to keep an eye on what guys are scoring and, you know, but you have to be able to weather the storm. Seattle has not done that. Seattle has not been consistent. Seattle has not been consistent in their systems and what they want to do. So that's what they have to focus on. So it almost doesn't matter what these numbers are <laughs> at this point in the season, I guess is what I'm saying, because Seattle has a lot of work that they 
need to do. So that's Dallas. We'll talk about th that game on Monday, obviously, because this is a Sunday night game. And then I'll get you ready for the rest of the week. Um, next week, I'll be on the road again. So uh, we'll, we'll navigate that. But I'm going to the men's Frozen Four where our boy Maddie Veneers is going to be playing for Michigan, hoping to get an NCAA title. Michigan, no stranger to the Frozen Four. They're going up against Minnesota State. And Minnesota, I should say that's the other side of the bracket. First, Min Michigan excuse me, has to get through Denver. And I'm working with a few of uh, the Locked On hosts and a few other people you've probably heard me talk about on this show. And I'm hoping that we can get you some previews. So that will be kind of midweek. We'll get you previews of the men's frozen four. Um, I also, there's premier hockey federation action, PHF women's hockey coming to Tulsa tomorrow, Saturday. So stay tuned as always. That's how you can follow me personally on social media. I'll give you some updates there and sure we'll talk about it on Monday as well. Coming up next, I want to go back to Dave Haxtell. I talked about Philip, or excuse me, I talked about Chris Drieger yesterday and him seeing a sports psychologist. Um, I talked about how I thought that this series was going to be split. I mentioned earlier that Philip Grubauer is starting, but I think things are heating up in the goaltending race. And I want you to hear from Dave Haxtell. He said some things about Drieger I didn't agree with. Um, I get what he was saying, but I thought it was a little bit dismissive. Um, but I thought it was really interesting, not only what he was saying about his goaltending the day before, or yesterday, I should say, um, he wouldn't give who the starter was going to be. He did mention it today, but he also added um, another comment that we're going to have to keep out for. So we're going to talk about goaltending coming up next. After months of playing, college basketball, women's and men's will determine who the top team in the nation is. That's right. We're talking Final Four. Um, and national champion, again, for the women's and men's side, is coming up this very week. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. From all the latest odds, contests, and player props, you name it. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your latest sports developments including podcasts and reviews for all of the leagues this season. And it's not, of course, it's not just basketball. We're talking about hockey, um, including that Bet Online actually sent this over to us. Um, you know, we have the odds for the NHL Stanley Cup just updated and um, you're 40 to one winners. Yikes. We just happen to be getting ready to play them. It's the Dallas Stars. The Dallas Stars. Your 40 to 1 favorites as of today, April 1st. I'm showing you this graphic graphic here. And so the teams in red you see have the longer odds. The teams in green have the shorter odds. And the teams in white, <clears throat> they stayed the same, such as the Colorado Avalanche or the Vancouver Canucks, 100 to 1. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're looking at. Um, anyway, so bet online. You can head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. As always, we thank you for listening to Locked on Crack and making us your first listen of the day. All right. So like I said, things got a little bit spicy maybe uh, for uh, Dave Haxtell regarding goaltending. I've wanted to see some equitable goaltending, but I want you to hear what Dave Haxtell had to say. I found his responses, I think, I almost want to say that I think he was trying to be a little bit elusive, right? And not necessarily give some things away, but I also found it really interesting what he did say and who is getting the start today. Again, it's Philip Grubauer in net. He's talked about Drieger and how he's performing, but then he had this weird comment. Again, I felt a little bit dismissive regarding Philip Grubauer in yesterday's episode about mental toughness. So here's Dave Haxtell talking about goaltending in the last two media availabilities. Grubauer uh, going to start tomorrow? I'll wait till game day to announce it, yeah. Did Drieger's performance give you any reason to... to consider starting in the third 
Yeah, I, well, I, you know, I talked yesterday about, you know, earning your next start and no question that, uh, you know, he played a solid game. He, he, he battled, you know, I said that after the game and um, he's, he's earned that next start, uh, whether or not that's tomorrow. You know, like I said, I'll, I'll wait and announce that decision. I've got it in my mind. I know who's going, but uh, we'll wait till game day to announce it. But his, you know, his performance was uh, in, in large part what we had hoped for. Uh, coming off of a good performance in, in L.A. and building off of that. Um, he gave us a chance to win. We didn't take advantage of that, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, um, you know, I, I like the uh, the step that his game took. When you look back to judge a goal performance, is there a standard that you want? Is it, is it as simple as giving us a chance, or is it, do you want to see well, all, or is there anything Yeah, like no, there's all kinds of statistical, um, you know, ways that you can look at it. Um, you know, you know, if if you're not over 900, you're not winning in this league very often. It's that's a real anomaly, and uh, most often, you know, you're, you're looking at, you know, if you want to look at, you know, stats, you know, at over 910 save percentage, we're we're in pretty good spots this year. Um, but you know, you, you can't do that. Uh, you can't strictly base a game off of statistics. So there there's so many things that go on within a game, and I talked about some of the saves that. Uh, that Driegs made, you know, especially at the end of the second. There was a couple of real good opportunities that they missed on, but he was in a good spot. Uh, and there's a couple of good saves uh, that he made down, uh, you know, down through that stretch as well. So there's a lot of different levels to to evaluate it on. Um, at the end of the day, his job is to, you know, is to work to give us a chance to win. Um, you know, especially in a situation where we're down by one. You know, he, he can't let that next one in. Um, so. Uh, you know, from from my standpoint, like I said, um, is there are there are there spots and areas to improve for him last night? Uh, absolutely, and you know they've you know he's already you know talking about those things and looking at them this morning. Um, but you know, for the most part, he uh, you know he had, he had a nice step forward in his game and gave us a chance. When you see him trying to work as hard as he is with uh, getting right back at it, making improvements this morning after a night like last night, you mentioned too seeing uh, his his uh, mental coach to put in that kind of work. You know, what does that say about how much he's doing to keep his game up along with his teammates as far as work ethic? Yeah, that's just being a pro. That's there's nothing spectacular about that. And you know, if we start giving guys props for working hard at their game, then we are we are in the wrong spot. Um, those are the expectations. You know, you, you work at your game, you work to improve. You're you're all in every day, um, and uh, those are you know those are very important things in terms of the fabric of, of what goes on. You know, in behind closed doors. Good. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, good. Thanks. Thanks. What, what do you like about Ruby? Uh, you know, Was. Yeah, it's, I mean, Groovy's game has been, you know, has been consistent. Uh, uh, you mentioned Driggs's game. You know, he he did play well, and you know, I, again, we're we're looking at, uh, you know, creating as you know as much of a com you know, competitive situation as possible. Um, Driggs has played well the last couple of games. Um, you know, had he had our had our team come away with a win, um, you know, there there would have been strong consideration for him to go three in a row. Um, but you know, if you look at uh, Groovy's last, uh, you know, his track record, the last few performances, they have also been solid. So, you know, we're going to need we need a real good performance tonight. We need uh, we're going to need leadership in that position, and uh, you know, Groovy will be uh, the man that uh, that gets the opportunity to go in and do that for uh, for his teammates. You've solid goal for Nathan Groovy or Drake, sort of these last seven, eight games most part. Is there something from your perspective that seems to have clicked with them or is it just sort of making the timely saves that No, I don't think anything has clicked. I mean that's um, you know that's you know again I think I've used this term maybe a little bit too much over the last couple of days, but you know, truly that's where we expect the you know these guys to be at. That's that's I think if you would ask them, I would believe they would tell you, you know, they they expect to, you know, to be uh, in position to lead our teams, you know, our team to good wins, um, and do that on a very, very consistent and nightly basis. So um, that's, you know, that's what we're working towards. So what do you make of that, fans? Am I reading too much into this? Does it sound like it's getting a little bit more competitive? I think it is. Now let me take you um, again to today, morning skate. This is, uh, he was asked right away about 
uh, goaltending. He said that he was not going to say anything yesterday during media availability. He'd wait till game day. This is what he said on game day and how he announced that Philip Grubauer would get the start. Go ahead. Who's in net tonight? Uh, Gruby is in net. There'll come a day when I'm not going to tell you that until game time. <laughs> For now, Groovy. You're running out of time. What's that? You're running out of time. There's Probably won't be this year. <laughs> just, just so you're aware. Just so when it comes, it's uh, it's not it's not a shock. Oh, I wasn't. I was looking right back at you, Bob. <laughs> he was going to ask that. Okay. <laughs> I think I think we're getting to a situation where they don't know who their number one is. That's my guess. Um, I don't know how much Philip Grubauer is going to like that. I've been kind of feeling that, again, there's just something going on there. Uh, I don't know. There, there's something uh, – I don't know. It's, it's always been a little bit of a tough read with Philip Grubauer, how he's feeling about the team, how he's feeling on the team, and things of that nature. Things have not gone well for the Seattle Kraken. All of the Seattle Kraken goaltenders have been left out to dry. There have been a bunch of times where both netminders – um, have also just, you know, maybe not stepped up to the plate. And, uh, you know, that's something to keep in mind. But you, did you hear what, um, did you hear what, uh, Gruby was saying? He was talking about, um, you know, just this idea that, uh, or excuse me, what Dave Haxtell was saying, you know, this idea that it's not just the stats. He's also looking at opportunities in the game for all of his players. And I think that's fair. I think that's absolutely fair. So we'll see what happens. Um, speaking of goaltenders, Joey Decord uh, gets the uh, Goaltender of the Month award for um, March. Uh, and so, of course, Joey Decord is with the Charlotte Checkers. Next season, though, we will have the Firebirds, so we won't need to uh, go through the Checkers here. But Joey Decord was 6 one and oh, he had a 1.55 goals against average and a 0.956 save percentage. Congratulations, Joy Decord. We know we've seen him with the Seattle Kraken, and he's been doing amazing things with the checkers. So there you go. We finished our last segment with goaltending. Tonight's a game day. You know what that means. It means the same thing that it, it, it every day that we're here. We're going to hold fast. We're going to stay true. And we're going to root loudly from the top of our lungs. Let's go crack in. I'll see you next week.